by all the gods old and new. That was quite the nasty storm, wasn't it? I thought for sure we were doomed when the waves separated us from our elven guides and that torrential rain made seeing more than a few yards all but impossible. Thankfully, it seems that no one was chucked overboard, at least that I can tell. But from this hellish humidity and blazing sunlight, there can be no question where we've ended up. It would seem that Lustria was our true destination. Perhaps the Slon unleashed that storm to redirect us here? Regardless, we've beached somewhere on the northwestern shore of the continent, which means we're not too far from the temple city of Slonhapek. Luckily, I know my way around and have some friends there, so let's get moving. While we're hiking, allow me to help pass the time by telling you about the greatest warrior to ever live in the City of Mist. As this voyage is about those who would be best suited for the role as heroes of legend, this is perfect, as there is no hero more deserving among the Lizardmen than Chakox, the Eternity Warden. For thousands of years, the Slon of Zlonhapek have been protected and watched over by the eternally vigilant warrior known only as Chakox. When exactly he emerged from the spawning pools beneath the City of Mists isn't recorded, only that the Prime Guardian is the last of his spawning still alive millennia later. Despite his incredible age offering a nearly countless number of opportunities for error, no charge under the protection of Chakox has ever been slain. Thousands of deadly assassins, rampaging monsters, and elite champions have attempted to cut down the Slon of Slonhapek, but all of them have found their efforts and their skulls pulverized by the Saurus' massive mace. There is only one time where he nearly failed in his sacred task, when the Lizardmen faced the truly horrific Keeper of Secrets known as Sla Ulan. This was no mere greater demon, but one of the deadliest generals from the Great Catastrophe thousands of years ago. It had taken Lord Huinit Tanukli, a second generation Slon and spawn brother of Lord Mazdamundi, and all of his sorcerous might plus an immense Lizardman army to banish the four armed demon at Slahua Lake. Yet now it had returned leading the largest legion of demons seen in Lustria since that terrible age, when chaos roamed free across the planet. Lord Huinik Tanukli could not be roused from his deep slumber to go face his ancient rival. So it was decided by the skink priest to awaken his subordinate, Lord Tanukli. The younger Slon prepared for war, summoning Chakox to his side and marching out leading the full might of Slon Hapek. The Lizardmen found the demons eagerly awaiting them at the pillars of unseen constellations. Lord Tanukli ordering for his cohorts to engage while he prepared to unleash mighty spells. However, Sla Ulan remembered his defeat well and was keen not to suffer banishment again. The forces of chaos had corrupted the site. The arcane energy roiling off the pillars, sapping the strength from the Lizardmen. The greater demon charged, followed into battle by legions of demonettes and bloodletters. The ensuing violence was a one-sided massacre, as the Saurus and Skinks were stunned by the draining sigils disorienting their senses and making it hard to even raise their weapons. In a matter of minutes, all that remained of Zlonhapek's army was Lord Tanukli and his Eternity Warden. Sla Ulan tore his way towards the unmoving Saurus, believing that his foul sorcery had immobilized the Prime Guardian, just as it had the rest of the Lizardmen. However, to Chakox, the roiling waves of corruptive sorcery were nothing compared to the intense magical energy he experienced daily while guarding the Slon within the Eternity Chamber. As of yet, he simply hadn't moved, simply because nothing had been a direct threat to either himself or his charge. When the greater demon finally came within reach and loomed over the prime guardian of Slonhapek, the Saurus suddenly exploded into motion, 
and tore into his surprised foe. Sla Ulan was a keeper of secrets, easily one of the swiftest and most deadly creatures in all of existence. Yet to his shock, this lizard man moved in a blur even he could not follow. In a matter of moments, the Eternity Warden Starstone Mace had pulped the greater demon into a steaming mass of ichor. Yet Sla Ulan had one last trick even as his physical form began to disintegrate, gathering all of his sorceress power and unleashing it in a single titanic blast towards Lord Tanukli. Chalkox immediately stepped in to block most of the blow with his own body, but enough streamed past him to shatter the Slan's defenses and knock the mage priest unconscious as Lord Tanukli's palanquin crashed to the ground. Without the greater demon to sustain them, the demonic legion vanished back into the void with screams of protest. Still, even with the battle won, only Chakox remained alert, and thus all he could do was guard his charge. For over a month, the Eternity Warden maintained his vigil, cutting down many monstrous reptiles and horrid creatures that were drawn to the battlefield and sought to feast upon the wounded Slon. Finally, a group of Skink scouts located the pair, and quickly arrived with further aid. Lord Tanukli was carefully secured upon the back of a Stegodon, and carried home to Slanhapek, his loyal guardian keeping pace alongside the entire trip back. That wraps up the lore portion for the Prime Guardian of Slanhapek, so let's turn our attention to how he might be acquired in campaign for players. I think the most fitting and exciting way to gain Chakox would be for there to be a quest line about how the army he was a part of has vanished. So you have to accomplish, say, a quest chain about sending an agent or lord to various regions to look for him and perhaps kill some enemies until it culminates into a quest battle where he's defending a lone slon and you have to save them. Alternatively, it could be something super simple and easy, like just recruit a slon. When it comes to how he works in battle, Chalkox is the real deal when it comes to a bodyguard class hero. There is no other character in all of Warhammer Fantasy who has as many amazing rules and abilities as the Eternity Warden when it pertains to keeping his charge alive. To start off when it comes to his stat line, he comes with a solid armor value due to the many layers he has of defense, including, of course, his Skull Helm, which we'll get to later on. So, I imagine he'd be in the 90 to 95 armor ballpark, but he doesn't come with a shield, of course. His melee defense and melee attack should be rather high, but focused more on attack, so perhaps a rough flip of Gorok's values for that. So, instead of having Gorok's melee attack and melee defense, switch those. Normal Saurus character, charge bonus and speed would be fine for his weapon strength it should definitely be very beefy chalkox is easily the hardest hitting of all the source legendary characters due to his massive mace and he should focus primarily on immense armor piercing damage i'd also note his attack animations and splash damage values should be focused on cleaving large groups apart with wide, sweeping swings of the Starstone Mace. So he's good at unit disruption, though of course, if there was a single entity character or monster that gets within reach, he'll be able to just bonk the hell out of them. Finally, his leadership should be incredibly stable and solid, but we'll come back to a gimmick about that later. For his unique attributes in battle, Chalkox should come with charge defense against large and guardian built in, alongside a couple of abilities we'll discuss right now. First off is his Eternity Warden rule, which should be a passive that makes it where if an enemy character is within 30 meters, Chalkox should gain a buff to his melee attack. So just like a nice plus 15 melee attack, so he can unleash the full wrath of the bonk. Next is his ultimate bodyguard ability, which should be a very powerful passive that grants Chalkox the unbreakable rule for as long as the lord in his army is still alive. 
So he's extremely motivated to protect his charge and keep them safe. As so long as the army's lord is still standing, Chalkox will fight to the death and ignore things like fear and terror. But, should the lord die, he'll immediately lose this ability and become much easier to deal with via terror bombing or army losses. From there, we need to move on to his magic items as he has three rather interesting ones that I think are straightforward to implement. First up is the Starstone Mace, a colossal weapon that was forged by the Old Ones using stone quarried from some other world, which grants it the ability to render magical enchantments inert. So, I'd have the Starstone Mace be a passive item, so you take it, just gives you a flat passive, that grants a plus 10 second ability recharge debuff to all of the Eternity Warden's melee attacks. So if he hits you with a melee attack, all of your spells and abilities would go on a 10 second cooldown or have 10 seconds added to their cooldown. This would be extremely powerful for dueling other characters by making it very difficult for them to use their items, abilities, and spells while battling Chalkox in close combat. I don't think it'd be too overpowered though, since as it would be a passive on his melee attack, it would require him physically smacking them, and he's not very fast, so if they're getting overwhelmed by him just repeatedly bonking them on the head over and over again, they can back up, and most characters are going to be able to outrun him to, you know, get off their abilities and spells and stuff. But I could see it being reduced to a 5 second cooldown, 10 seconds is too OP. Next up is the Helm of the Prime Guardian, which is of course that huge skull helm that just, oh, it's so good looking. This piece of magical armor once belonged to the Guardian of Origins, said to be the first Temple Guard to have ever been spawned on the planet, and the spirit of that ancient Saurus still inhabits the skull, lending its ancient wisdom to the wearer. This should be a very simple item that grants Chalkox a passive ability that allows him to ignore the unspottable trait on enemy units. So, normally in game, a regular Saurus, thanks to their predatory senses, can spot hidden units at 160 meters, unless they have the unspottable trait, in which case they can't detect them until they're much closer. I would have Chalkox, so long as he has the Skull Helm equipped, uniquely be able to completely ignore the unspottable trait, just like he was able to in Tabletop, spotting those wretched Skaven and Night Goblins no matter how hard they try to hide. This would be a very thematic item for him, and very nasty in certain matchups. His final item, which man, he does have a lot of items for a hero, is by far the most important. The key to the Eternity Chamber. Eternity Chamber keys are insanely rare and incredibly powerful artifacts, inscribed with intricate wards that slow the very flow of time around them. This essentially grants the Prime Guardian of Slanhapek a colossal advantage of dragging even the fastest enemies down to his level, so that he can easily dodge around their attacks. The key to the Eternity Chamber should be represented with an active ability that, when activated, grants Chalkox damage resistance and a, maybe a small increase to his melee defense. I'm thinking something like a 20% ward save and maybe plus 10 melee defense for like 24 seconds, 30 seconds, something in that ballpark. Whew! Man, the Eternity Warden has quite the list of potential powers, doesn't he? But we're done with that segment now. So let's talk about weaknesses. The biggest flaw that Chalkox suffers from, first and foremost, is his movement speed. Being just a Saurus character on foot, he is doomed to rock that 34 speed, which means it is very easy to avoid him so long as you're paying attention. Further, he isn't rocking a shield of any sort, so armor-piercing ranged missiles will be excellent for cutting him down to size, as he can only rely on the generic missile resistance all characters have. Furthermore, he's an infantry-only character, so even with having charge defense against large, 
Chalk Ox will still need to watch out for cavalry or monster charges, so he doesn't get punted too far away. Another thing of note is that, of course, he's a guardian hero, so if Chalk Ox isn't babysitting another character, he's basically going to be losing value. But at the same time, he's really, really slow, so staying in his bubble could be a pain for certain other characters. Finally, I really like the idea of his full power being dependent on engaging enemy characters while keeping his army's lord alive. So if he were to get isolated against elite troops or a monster and the lord is killed off, then he'll really lose out on some powerful buffs. I'd also imagine with the way that I've imagined him working, he'd be a pretty expensive character if you brought him fully kitted out in multiplayer. He definitely seems like one of those characters you kind of turn some of his items off and on depending on who your opponent is. Alrighty. With that done, let's move on to his functionality in campaign. Obviously, Chalk Cox is the king of all bodyguards and should have a design to reflect this. So first and foremost, for agent actions, I would have the Eternity Warden focus on training, assassination, affecting public order, assault units, and cleanse corruption. When it comes to his starting trait, I think he should have something called Sacred Duty, perhaps, which should make all the Temple Guard in any army he joins have the immune to psychology rule and maybe a small stat boost. From that point beyond, just buffing his stat line the normal way in his skill tree, he should offer a number of powerful and unique upgrades. Of course, he should get access to the legendary guardian ability we've discussed in prior videos involving bodyguard characters, which are the last two. This should increase, or rather upgrade, his guardian passive to either grant a flat ward save instead of physical resistance, or double the amount of physical resistance offered. Another unique skill he should have, and be able to get at a much later level, say like level 20, could be something called Prime Guardian, which should upgrade all of the Temple Guard in his army to have even better stats and gain the Unbreakable trait. Insanely powerful, I know, but rather specific, only affects his army and only acquired at a late level. Plus, he did that in Tabletop. He made the Temple Guard he joined Unbreakable, so I really would like to see that. Another idea that comes to mind is perhaps he can get an earlier skill unlock called Silent Sentinel which improves his vigor reduction and makes him cause fear, as foes are unnerved by the reptilian standing frozen like a statue, just waiting for someone to threaten his charge. That could be a suitable skill, available, say, around, like, level 10. Another idea I had was what if he had a really unique skill he could unlock called, like, Eternal Vigilance, that makes it where if a lord is killed in battle... They're only wounded instead of slain and recover immediately the next turn in Chalkox's army. This could essentially represent Chalkox intercepting most of the blow and keep them just on the edge of life. Perhaps they could have a trade-off of causing the Eternity Warden to also be wounded, but he takes the normal amount of time to come back. Just brainstorming some ideas. Furthermore, I really do think that Chalk Ox would be a hero that you would... I imagine he'd have increased line of sight as probably part of the campaign effects for his Skull Helm and maybe for his army. And then maybe also he reduces the chance of enemy agent actions on his army by like 20 to 50%, depending on how crazy you want to go with it. I would not make him like Corhill, where Corhill's more about like chasing people down and wounding people that try agent actions against him. I would just have Chalk Ox be really, really good at preventing it. Finally, when it comes to an appearance, look, look at this. Look at this beautiful artwork. And look at this model. Even in Age of Sigmar, where like a ton of models have been getting really, really nice upgrades. Granted, the Lizardmen have not been one of them. But a lot of armies have been getting beautiful visual updates. But Chalk Ox is, oh, mwah, he's still gorgeous. You can tell that's a... It's just such a beautiful model. I I would do horrible things. Horrible things to myself or others. 
to get Chalk Ox put into the game because I just I want to see him. He's he's probably without a doubt the most gorgeous of the Lizardman characters. Like there are definitely characters who I like a little more just because they have more stories and stuff. But like when it comes to pure aesthetic or pure appearance, oh baby, Chalk Ox, Chalk Ox is where it's at. He is he is the ten out of ten among the Lizardmen. Don't take that in a weird way. Anyway. That wraps up everything to talk about involving Chalkox, the Eternity Warden. And even through this intense mist surrounding Slonhapek, I can finally see the towering structures of the city, not too far ahead. I know we're all exhausted from that long hike through the jungle, but we somehow managed to all make it here in one piece. At least, I think. Honestly, I forgot to count how many of you there were in our little troops, so if you got picked off by a feral Ripperdactyl or fell into a leech-filled swamp, then, uh... Leave a comment and I'll be sure to have you picked up. Hopefully still breathing. For the rest of us, enjoy the pleasantries and amenities of the City of Mists. I hear the food is exotic, but quite delightful. Just don't venture too far out into the mist alone. Rumor does have it there are things out there. Anyway, until next time, see you guys. But before we go, I do want to give a quick shout out to my wonderful, stupendous, beautiful, unmatchable in their kindness and good look patrons for all of their continued support as I do this whole crazy thing. I really, really appreciate y'all's patience with me and uh, helping me keep the lights on and have food on the table and all that stuff. And then, of course, we have to talk about the big lads, which used to be the big six, but now it's the big seven. So I do want to give a special shout out to the following people. We've got Wendell Short Eyes, Jeffrey Ramers, Charles Bode, Sign of the Emperor, Eric, Higgins the Seagull, and the new arrival of CJ Ubusta. Thank you guys very much for your extremely generous support. I hope everything I do makes it worth it. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.